Okay. Roll the intro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my name is Stanley. I'm Rodrigo. Yeah, and today we're going to talk about uh, marketing and how what role does video have in it. So maybe let's start with uh, some broad thoughts. What do what do you think marketing is? Marketing is yeah. you getting your message out there to the public about the services or the product that you offer. Okay, you literally killed it, right? Because you are the uh, on number one. You went full local, right? You're on the first page when correct. you type in your uh, like what is it? what are the keywords? Keywords, correct. So we we rank, we help businesses rank for keywords in yeah. their local market, so they're able to find. So in the instance, Santa Monica dentist or you know Santa Monica design studio, mm -hmm. we help businesses get found through those keywords yeah but what i mean when i look at the google uh -huh. there are literally like eight positions we have eight six persons? we have six positions plus and videos a for video production in our in our city okay so how did you get so many positioning on a google it's really about understanding what google's looking for and using because google literally tells you what they want yeah. and you know for us it was understanding you know with google when you're looking for search, there's different things that you want to consider, which the first one's the Google three pack. Three packs pretty much can be the three little things that show up when you type in a business. It's gonna have, you know, their name, their name, their you know, directions or yeah. phone number. Mm -hmm. That's a Google three pack. Okay. Underneath that, people also call it a snack pack, three pack, whatever it be. Underneath that, that's the organic search. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Okay. And then for us, what we did through optimizing citations, which citations are things like Google My Business, Bing, Whoa. Yelp, uh, Easy Local, uh, these different places that you know are mm -hmm. directories. Okay. We listed and optimized our business in over a hundred of them. You, I mean, there's different numbers you could do. Mm -hmm. We optimized them with our keywords in there. With, with you know our phone number, address, and name, okay. all these different I see places. What you, I see what you did there. So we created okay. a signal, so we let Google know they were like, "Hey, listen, here's our business. We're listing all these different directories, and we offer all these different okay, so services." So we build this kind of net, right? That yeah, the web. Okay, so uh, that's one interesting thing because what you uh, just told me is that when people ser search for it, mm -hmm. right? And I wrote. I wrote an uh, interesting article about search and discovery and okay. how that unfolds today. Because you see, n number of searches on Google has been the same since 2012. Okay. And the uh, number of people using internet has skyrocketed. Okay. So what that means, that these days people are searching less and less. But when you count it up for a search per one person, it equals to one search per day. So that's not a lot, right? But when you look at the social media, mm -hmm. people start spending time more than, and when you calculate time they spend on social media, they spend around 50 minutes a day on social media. Mm -hmm. So people are shifting from search to discovery. And w what do you think about it? I mean, I, I partially agree with you on that. And the reason for that is that something that you won't see with just on Google search results yeah. is the information of voice. Mm -hmm. Voice is taking up a huge market that's of search. Yeah. And it's a huge thing, you know what I mean? And that's another whole other frontier to talk about. But, you know, it's optimizing SEO and all that. That's another role that plays within, you know, voice. But mm -hmm. that's, I feel like that's a whole other topic of discussion. But, I mean, there's still, it's still a very used platform because for a lot of the people that I work with and mm -hmm. my ideal clientele, they're the older, and it's like, Think of how, how do your customers think? Where are your customers at? And for me, I know that my demographic is 40 to 60 year olds mm -hmm. that work you know, at an office, sitting in a computer, and I yeah. need to think like them about what are the search terms and what are they looking for online? And that's what I try to implement and use on my websites so when they are doing search and discovery. They're finding articles about, hey, how much does a video cost? How long does it take a video to remake? I'm creating all this different content. Yeah, and that's that, the thing. Yeah. And that's the thing. Uh, what, what you are saying is um, when people search for this video uh, services, you just get, give them the video because video is a very good Correct. media, right? So give them a video, how to do it and how to reach it. But now that we kind of see the people shifting towards the disco discovery, as uh -huh. I ended, right? What do you think will be the role of video? Because right now it's like explaining how to do what you are searching for. But in the future, 
uh, as more and more people are uh, heading towards discovery, yeah. what do you think will be the role of video? Well, I, mean, I think the current role of video on top of education is going to be retention. You know, the, what video really works for, you know, small businesses, okay. it's, a, it's all strategy really because you implement in a video into your website. So like, let's say you are a dentist. Yeah. Now you have a video on your website and we helped you rank to get there. Mm -hmm. Now someone clicked on the Google three pack and they see a video there. Now they're spending 30 seconds to maybe two minutes if yeah, they're entertained true. enough on your website because they're watching the video. They're not spending time reading the content. And that's something you have to understand. You writing content, you're doing it for Google, for Google to understand. Okay, for the it, algorithm. Exactly. Okay. And then you producing video content, that's for your consumer to, to be able to understand what you're doing. And the way that that plays out in two ways is that the video helps your client understand what you do, mm -hmm. but then it also helps you keep your client on your website longer. And the way that that strategy works is that now that the client's spending more time on your website, yeah. your bounce rate decreases with Google. So then to Google, like, hey, this person went and clicked on this dentist, and now they spent three minutes on this website. Normally, other dentists in the areas, people are spending 30 seconds to a minute and they're clicking off. Okay. This okay. website is more relevant to what people are looking for because you're spending more time in it. Okay. So to Google, yeah, they're gonna favor you because they're like you're providing. They're all they care about is user experience. Okay, that's uh, very interesting because that kind of links up to something we spoke earlier. Uh -huh. You told that you told us that social media is not the best place to be for small companies. Why is that? Yes or no. So for small businesses, okay. If I was to give, if I was given a marketing budget, I wouldn't spend time. Like, I get a lot of companies like, "Hey, can you do social media for us?" And it's to yeah. me is not the best strategy. But it all depends on what you're trying to do. Now, if you're selling this product, I would spend money on social media, creating video content. I would call my buddy Mo. Mm -hmm. He does lifestyle brand videos. He'd be like, "Mo, I got this great product." <laughs> create a video for me, yeah. I would then advertise through social media, mm -hmm. through YouTube to sell this product. But the thing is, when you're a service-based business, and I'm just gonna keep using a dentist, yeah. I don't wanna see your video on my YouTube feed, I don't wanna see your video on my Instagram feed, because I don't care about, like when people go to the dentist, when they look you up, it's because they're in pain. And mm -hmm. they, wanna, they wanna fix right now and then. Yeah. So unless, if you're a dentist, a video that you can do is, how to brush my ki my kids' teeth, how to floss. There's like those little things that you could do that you know like you could bring some sort of value to people. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, um, if I'm on my Instagram and you're not a hot doctor like most girls like to look at, I don't care about seeing that kind of stuff. So you have to understand the mentality of you know yeah. your clientele. So going back to what we're saying, mm -hmm. rewinding it is that if social media is plays part of your strategy, that after we optimize your website and now you have SEO and you're mm -hmm. ranking, you have a video, I would then retarget you using social media. Okay, I see. So you would uh, use social media as retargeting for Correct. people who already showed intent. Exactly, they already visit your website, okay. they know that you exist. Okay, but people who, for example, are, <laughs> let's say we have the, these people, right, who are uh, following some kind of dentists or uh -huh. something like that, that are interested in this topic, right? Maybe dentists are not like the, best example in this case let's maybe Whatever shift it to e-commerce yeah. okay. let's shift it to e-commerce and let's say sneakers right it's hot so um let's say you have these people who are interested in sneakers per, per se as a topic so wouldn't you then try to target them somehow with video just just kind of build your awareness about your store yeah but i mean so but that's different though because i i feel with if you're selling sneakers yeah. in a market like if you're in new york city different situation like you have to play to your market and not every and like that's the thing like not every strategy is gonna work for everyone you're in new york city and you sell custom sneakers yeah you could do a lot of advertisement because there's a lot of outreach but for me in my local market you know a sneakers like i would advise you to not even start a sneaker store <laughs> like you're just like you're the money you're gonna spend on overhead to start a sneaker store yeah. start it out, out of your garage okay so there is there like any product that would be hot well, it's not so much about it. It's like it's services versus products, and yeah. they're two different marketing strategies. Okay, you know I, what I see. Mean? What you so mean. yeah, because it's like in not everything is gonna work for. Mm -hmm. Like I have a client that he sells um, like medical bandages, and he wanted to do local search. I'm like, dude, that's not like 
it's about being smart with your money and what you're going to do. Like for you to want to do local search for medical benefits, like it's not smart allocation of your funds. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you're better off targeting people on social media that own medical department stores okay. if you're going to do that. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. it's like having an understanding of who is it that you're trying to reach to. And, and then you have to, you know, contextualize your marketing to them. Okay. 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 Um now uh, I'll circle back a okay. little bit because uh, what you did is you used YouTube for marketing to dentists, right? You, you showed this video mm -hmm. that you made for dentists. Correct. It was basically the testimonials, uh, right? Yeah, I took, I found a dentist that I wanted to work with. Yeah. And then I found a bunch of really good reviews that he had online and I made a little 30 second video of it. And then I ranked it on YouTube. <laughs> I just love it. And I was like, hey, so you, so you had a really great reviews. I made this video for you. Check it out. It's ranked on the first page of okay, Google or okay. YouTube. So uh, that was kind of unconventional way you used YouTube for the dentist. Let's Correct. Say, right? And right now we see a, like <laughs> a huge rise of TikTok, right? Yeah. At this point, I believe it's higher than Facebook, if I'm correct. It could be. The user base is skews so young right now that, you know, for the, and there's still a lot of people even in this pro group yeah. that have never used TikTok before. Yeah, that's and it's true. I, it, I, didn't, I haven't used it myself. Okay, so there you go. Like, yeah. I, I spent a little bit of time because it is emerging video. Okay. And it's the same way that Inst when I started Instagram, it was 15 second videos. You, oh, I, needed yeah, I remember that. I needed to compel a story yeah. into 15 seconds. I remember that those things evolved the same way instagram used to not have stories snapchat had stories they you know what i mean it's all these are all feature based okay. all TikTok but needs snapchat to do right was now. never used commercially though yeah there was there's was all, oh there's ads in there like i think a really great strategy that used to work for snapchat mm -hmm. is when you used to look at a map and see where people were at mm -hmm. you could then do service based so like uh, something that I saw a lot with the uh, Red Bull in yeah. my area is that Red Bull, somebody, a friend of mine used to work for them, they used to go on Snapchat and look at all the hot spots to see where they were on weekends. And then Red Bull would go out to those oh, areas and promote Red that. Bull. Like a heat map. Exactly, because they okay. knew where all the heat map was at, where all the people were at. Okay, so that's one way to use Snapchat. And Correct. what would be the way to use uh, TikTok? I don't know. Okay. It's new. It's new. So have you ever influencers, seen? Influencers. Uh, <laughs> influencers. I'll do. Because like, it's really easy for you to grow an influence. I have a friend right now. His name is Lucky Goats. Kid's 22 years old. He makes dog videos. He makes funny skit with his dog. This kid's 22 years old. He's getting paid 150 bucks a day mm -hmm. to make a funny video. Because okay. he has music producers now. Because he has about 350,000 followers. Yeah. But music producers want him to use their songs on his videos for them to get exposure yeah but that's the thing 22 years old if you got paid to make a 30 second video for 150 bucks like dude that's okay like, i'm getting to tick that yeah, man. <laughs> but it's, it's a young it's a young platform that yeah, it the, is. you know for you to reach to get a lot of reach, it's not hard. Are you on TikTok? I am. Okay, so what are you doing there? Nothing. I'm, I'm consuming. <laughs> I'm consuming. I'm learning. Oh, I'm seeing it. what people are doing. Like, what I'm most amazed about TikTok is the young creative people mm -hmm. and their ability to tell stories in a very funny and different complex way. Isn't ways. it like Vine? This, uh, short it was like videos? Vine. There's yeah. short, I mean, there's videos that are 15 seconds long and there's yeah. videos that, you know, they're 10 minutes or one minute long. But there's also, I could shoot a video and you could take my video and you could collaborate on a video. Okay. Which you see people doing things that it. like, I'm like, whoa, I didn't even think about that. You know what I mean? Like taking really out of weird context videos and putting them together. Okay, but I it's, see. That's where I think, you know, where video is going to change. Because, you know, for a lot of what we do now, it's the consumers I market to are a lot older. Mm -hmm. But eventually, that's going to skew down. So you have to... You have to, the same way that you have to change your video format for YouTube than you do for Instagram and for Facebook. Okay. You're going to have to change that video messaging to be able to reach those people. So the On same TikTok, way, right? exactly. So using, you know, different GIFs and things like that within your video and using these different, you know, um, motion graphics, you're speaking to the younger demographic too. So okay, you have to I be able to, so like me right now, I just want to consume and learn, see what the kids are doing. Then also like, it's really a great place to find young talent. You okay. know what I mean? Like for me, yeah. being able to reach like out a, to a kid, be like, hey. Cheap influencers. Exactly, point, cheap right? influencers, oh, okay. but easy, even no uh, creative people. Yeah. Because like, it's a lot easier for me to hire a 15-year-old to make another video for a 15-year-old than for me to hire a 30-year-old to make a video for a 15-year-old. Yeah, I mean, at, a at this point when you get uh, some kind of 
work and where, and where you need to market to young people you already got it right you know where the place is and how to reach it exactly okay okay so that's it <laughs> thank you a lot man it's been a pleasure sure, to talk man. with you ah, pleasure. okay cheers <laughs> peace <laughs> okay that's been actually the first time i did this kind of shit how did you like it